1962 Ford Thunderbird coming up next on Monster Hobbies. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello model car builders, are you ready for another exciting unboxing right down here at Monster Hobbies? Well today we have a special treat for you in this great AMT Ertl 1962 Ford Thunderbird. Now this kit is a reissue, but it did come out originally in the heyday of AMT model building design when AMT was competing against Monogram and Tamiya for the best models ever built. So this beautiful gem is one that we're going to take a look at next. So let's go down where the pavement hits the road, but don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this exciting video with all your friends. So now let's see what's in the box. Now we turn the clock all the way back to 1962 as we take a look at Ford's brand new 1962 Thunderbird. Now this is another one of those cool AMT kits from back in the day. Although the box art is not too exciting. Now this was taped on here and it ripped off. I know this is an older kit. There are some neat pictures up here about the Thunderbird. Almost appears to be a different red than what's photographed. Of course it's got the barcode there. And then this one came out in 2005 by RC2. Very cool kit, skill level two. Ages 10 and up, needs glue and paint. And then on this side I've got a notation, the engine block and pan are glued together. So this was just for my own needs. But let's pull off the lid and take a look at the very cool, very interesting instructions. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. So this was bought at Walmart in a 3-pack for $14.95 on December 26, 2003, a very long time ago. $14.95, of course, divided by three is not much money at all. <laughs> all right, so opening this up, of course, we have our index of symbols and recommended paint colors for this model. Look at that. Chevrolet engine red. <laughs> okay, on a Ford. Anyway, aluminum gloss black, uh, blue, gold, flat red, gloss white, flat white, chrome silver, flat black, and silver. Eel. Okay, so opening up the instructions, so we see the very nice multi-piece engine. This kit came out at a time when AMT was trying to compete with Tamiya of Japan for best parts in detail, along with Ravel and Monogram. So we're looking at some very exciting looking images here. And look at the uh, tricarb manifold, it actually has the bottom of the carburetor, the top of the carburetor, and the bottom of the air cleaner, and the top of the air cleaner, which is really groundbreaking for tooling at the time. And then of course, look at all the parts that go on the fan belt. And look at that fan belt. Crazy for the era. Oh yeah. And then up top here, we get the colors for the Thunderbird. Then it shows the multi-piece wheels. I mean, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six pieces per wheel including the wheel back, the retainer, the tire, the white wall insert, the outer plated wheel, and the knockoff hubcaps. Very good stuff. And look at that interior right there. Look at all the components involved in that. The instrument panel, steering column, steering wheel, front and left and right door panels. This is not a tub, like earlier 60s kits. The center console, the firewall, the seat fronts and backs, and the rear seat all pop onto that wonderful chassis. And then as we flip the chassis over, you got the exhaust pipes, the engine brace, the spindles, and the lower control arms. And you could take off those tie rods. And with a little bit of metal and mounting, you can actually make these wheels poseable. Steering box, the transmission mount, springs, and the engine drops in place. And then you get to the back end of this, drive shaft, the differential, differential housing, or the cover in the front of me. The springs, they actually have shock mounted plates that are separate. I mean, you are really getting a value for this model. Especially if you can get it for $14.95 divided by three, <laughs> like I did. Anyway, so then we have our windshields there and the brace, as well as all the hoses for the radiator and everything. 
including a da -da -da, the master cylinder. And then over here we have the hood and a convertible top, and it also has the optional tonneau cover with the headrests, which fits nicely in the body. And then of course we got our side mirrors and the grill and everything, and the rear. Now there's no custom parts on this, but I've seen these things in Scale Auto Magazine with lots of customizing done by other people. So now let's take a look at the actual plastic. So the very first thing we're going to look at on our Thunderbird here is the excellent looking body that we have. It looks pretty flat because it doesn't have the roof on it, of course, being a convertible. But here you can see the nice under details of the inner fenders. And uh, I don't know if the camera can get this, but there's a nice Thunderbird script here. And we have our three little portal ends here. A nice but kind of faint Thunderbird logo on the back of the trunk lid. And then here we've got some of those uh, holes and grooves for where the rear bumper mounts. So very nicely molded. There are of course some mold marks under here that you'll have to take care of with your number 16 hobby blade. But other than that this is a very excellent looking model from AMT. It's interesting here they have the door handles which are sunken into the trim right here, if you look. It's a really cool feature and really accurate to the real car. Next up on this parts tree, we have our 62 Thunderbird hood and the convertible top that's been folded up to protect us from the rain. And then over here we have our front suspension component, the bottom piece of it. Now, looking under the roof here, they have molded in the texture which is really nice but unfortunately these mold marks kind of wreck that so again you'll have to use your number 16 hobby knife and just scrape it along so that they disappear and under the hood here we have our nice cross rib detail but again mold marks but those shouldn't be too hard to get out they are in a fairly relatively easy easy place to get rid of them our final body components is the headrest here and these covers which glue onto the front of the headrest. And as you can see here, the fit is very nice and very precise to the body. Next up we have our chassis detail which at this stage in AMT's uh, competition with Tamiya and Ravel and everybody uh, the detail on this is really excellent and look at the gas can here or the that's not the gas tank <laughs> This is the gas tank But look at this detail here on this panel. You got that nice Nice uh, star burst pattern in there and then if we take this and turn it over And we'll see that there are a lot of nice places for the seats to line up and sink into but the only downfall we have again are these mold marks and these are right on the transmission tunnel which has a carpeted pattern on it so that'll be a little bit tricky to remove with your knife blade but judging by these two holes there should be a center console that goes in here that will cover a bit of this mark and then of course our dashboard and whatever will be here so you might not see this one but still excellent quality on this kit. Our next parts tree here has our seats in it. These would be the back seat. And then our door panels are molded separately. And you can see the crisp detail on these door handles. Here you have the power window mechanism for the entire car. That little ashtrays molded in on the back, just like on the real thing. And this is a brace for underneath the hood. Now this part's tree contains both the rear or the wheel brakes, which are all drum brakes, it appears, uh, as well as a front steering bit. The other one's gone. Ooh, that's not good. Um, radiator hoses here, and there we have our bucket seats. 
Next up on this parts tree, there are quite a lot of parts on here. There's your center console that we talked about in the interior. And as you can see, it's quite wide, so maybe you don't really have to scrape off that mold mark that lies underneath it. Maybe it'll cover it all. There's our dashboard, and this is a beautiful thing. You can see the uh, instruments here, and then it's got a nice little textured pattern inside. This would be great with uh, bare metal foil or some aluminum paint to bring out that highlights and details. There's our radiator. Our battery is really crisply molded and has um, the uh, battery caps on here. They're really pronounced. You can see them really well. There's our firewall, uh, the brake master cylinder, the, uh, the backing of it. Somewhere along here should be the front part. Oh, right there. And then here we have our, alter our, uh, our generator. And it's got two mounting brackets, which is quite accurate to the car. And then there's stuff like the power steering. Uh, there's the windshield washer bag. Needs a full moco on there. <laughs> and our, our belts here and our fan. Our next parts tree includes the deep dish steering wheel, which was a Ford safety feature back in the day, with the horn ring on the inside. Then we have our uh, shifts shift levers and whatnot on our steering console. These are licensed plates. Now you got your full length leaf springs and the nicely molded exhausts. And here we have a rather long and narrow parts tree, but this one has our springs on it. It also has the front portions of the exhaust pipes. And look here, you got this little flat area with these two little holes in here, which would line up with the other half of the exhaust pipe quite nicely. Shock absorbers, um, shock absorber tower tops. Then here's our differential with the differential front cover and drive shaft and a little bracket there, probably to mount your transmission to. All right, so a while ago I was trying to build this engine, but this is basically what's in the box. Sorry for the shaky cam. <laughs> but uh, you can see the nice crisp detail on all those components. The engine, of course, is three pieces. It's been glued together. So a left and a right hand side with the transmission off the back, and of course our oil pan underneath. But you know, you could build this motor and leave it open and displayed like this. It is quite a nice thing. Uh, they've got the valves in the cylinder heads, which are visible underneath the valve covers. And of course we've got our intake manifold with the upper and lower carburetor as well as this oval plate here for the air cleaner. So next up we have my favorite part of all model kits and that is the chrome tree. Now there's not very many, actually there's really no custom pieces in this Thunderbird, but the quality of what you're looking at here is really nice and it's excellent that they gave you a fully chromed window frame here because usually when you do these with bare metal foil you always get crinkles up in here and all the rest because the foil has a hard time bending over unless it's really pulled tight. But with this, this is all chrome plated and they put the, the mounting attachments here and here so that you won't see it when you glue it in from underneath the car which would glue in here. And there you got your your separate no draft windows. The grill is beautiful, even though it's upside down in this video. <laughs> There's your rear bumper, and you got mirrors and all kinds of antennas and windshield wipers there. And these wire wheels are really beautifully done with the knockoffs. And there is the top of your air cleaner with the Thunderbird logo right there. So here we have our clear pieces and you get these nice rear and front windshields or windows. Uh, there's our no drafts there and there. Now these four quad headlights have the, that grill pattern, but these ones are more like the Lucas bulbs with the uh, little dot in the middle. And here we have two sets of rear taillights. So I do believe one of these is stock and one the bottom one is custom because these sort of had that same Lucas light dot things in there, but these ones are more uh, 
round and flat, and they've got two, four little dots there representing some kind of bolts or something. And now we have our BF Goodrich Silvertown tires. These were specially made for this car, and they're really nice. And as you can see in this package back here, these are white wall inserts to pop into these recessed areas on the tires, just to save you trying to paint white walls with latex into here. And these tires are great. They've got a nice tread pattern on them, which is quite true to the original BF Goodrich tires. Sorry, my camera's having trouble focusing in. But anyway, an excellent, excellent set of tires. And if we move this over, You'll notice they give you a spare white wall insert in case you accidentally crack it by putting it in here. Or if you're very careful, you will have a spare one for use on other tires of similar nature. Last but not least, we have our deck hall set, which really just consists of three license plates. You have these Bird DR, so Bird Drive, I guess. And then you've got a South Carolina C39 8 Five, six license plate and then from the Empire State <laughs> all right from the Empire State is the Birdman doo, 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 doo. anyway kind of a weird license plate to put in here but if you want your car to be driven by the Birdman from Empire State then you can put these on the pack and that concludes our review of the 1962 Ford Thunderbird by AMT Ertl. Well, I hope you enjoyed this exciting review of the AMT 1962 Ford. It was a really cool model kit, wasn't it? Of course it was. So if you can find this thing out there on eBay or whatever, or maybe wait until round two reissues it, you will have a really cool kit. And remember that you saw it first right down here at Monster Hobbies. So uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and let's get this video up to 100 likes. And until next time, happy model building.